Well, hi everyone, and and hi Laura, and nice to meet you. Because this too, is the Carlos. first time we <laughs> it is, it is, yeah. We get to see each other in real life, and it's also well the first time for me uh, making a live in English, and also together with someone. And um, I don't know. During this whole process, it's been I've I've felt really comfortable talking with you, and I'm really excited about what we're gonna do. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> Good. And maybe we can start talking a little bit about ourselves. What about sure. you? Sorry. <laughs> um, well, I'm an artist and an illustrator, and lots of what I paint is the natural world, some animals and birds and fish, um, but also fruit and, and naturally occurring foods. And um, I've filmed one Domestica course. I'm in the middle of filming another one. Mm -hmm. So you're <laughs> one course ahead of me in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. What about you? Well, my, my name is Carlos Rodriguez Casado, and my my work is is in, in it, I work in a different field because I usually work with portraits and characters, as you can see on the screen. Um, I work mostly with human figure, and I only use the technique of of the watercolor technique. So this time, uh, I'm really taking a challenge with you because I I know that you're an artist that plays a lot with different media and and I really don't know what is going to come out, out of this, but I'm really excited to know. Yeah, no, let's start. It's going to be interesting because you work entirely with watercolour, is that right? Yeah, That's whereas it. It, for me, it's one of like many tools that I throw at something. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I was I was telling the, the team that I, I'm going to feel like cheating on an, on, an, on an exam. You know, I have a good <laughs> student over here and I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> No, I think we can both learn something from each other. I'm it's sure. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So, okay. should we start? Yeah, so we've got a <laughs> dragon fruit and papaya mm -hmm. on this tablecloth. So okay. this is probably more um, the kind of subject that I would paint, right? Mm -hmm. So you mostly do portraits, so. That's it. It's yeah. completely new to me. And um, we have, okay, we have different angles, uh, different points of view uh, to interpret this, this, this figures. So mm -hmm. let's see what comes out. Let's start. <laughs> Um, how would you normally start? Because um, you don't usually sketch before, right? It really depends. I think for something like this, I would start with a few basic pencil shapes so mm -hmm. that I'm planning where it's going to sit on the page. Mm -hmm. But I don't generally do a drawing first and then mm -hmm. kind of add the paint afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about you? How do you think you'll start? I think I'm going to start making a sketch with, uh, I have this watercolor pencils. Okay. Uh, so I might start with this, but it's hard to choose which color to start with because yeah, as long yeah. as you, when, when you start um, adding the, the, the brass strokes, it mixes. So you, you got to be careful, yeah, you know, but yeah. sometimes when I, when I, when I start drawing, I am, I don't, I'm not really sure how it's going to turn out, but mm -hmm. I like to start like drawing some shapes and Try to define the composition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that interesting mix, isn't it, between how much you plan and how much you kind of react. Mm -hmm. And maybe especially so with watercolour when um, it can feel quite unpredictable. I mean, do you, do you, you've been working with watercolour for a long time, so do you still find it quite an unpredictable um, medium? Or do you feel like you have it under control completely? Uh, oof. I, th I think it's. <laughs> I think it would, it would be impossible to have it completely under control but um i i i feel like with uh, as time has passed by in my work uh i've tried to be more in control of what i do which is kind of going against the technique like the, the way you enjoy yeah, it yeah. most is when you let it be i guess that's interesting isn't it that's sort of um what we were chatting about before the before the, the filming started isn't it about when you 
when you become quite experienced as an artist, do we become more nervous about trying something new or making a mistake or kind of become harder on ourselves perhaps? Mm -hmm, definitely. I, I feel like the more you, the more you are experienced in, in, in your technique, um, the more you, um, you restrict yourself sometimes. That, that happens to me, we were talking about it before, mm -hmm. um, with watercolor. Like, uh, I, I was saying that maybe I'm a little bit thick-headed in, in that sense, because when I take one technique, I want to explode it to the limit, mm -hmm. and that uh, stops me from trying. You know, we have, to, today we have uh, watercolor pencils, pastels. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried this in ages, so. No, that's good. <laughs> uh, so, once you, once you start with watercolor, mm -hmm. you try to uh, work with the stain as much as possible, um, as long as it's wet, or mm -hmm. you try to mix the media from the start? No, I usually, I usually um, get it all down in watercolor, mm -hmm. but I don't worry too much about the detail. And then when it's dry, that's when I would add the detail afterwards with, uh, I've got colored pencils, I've got wax pastels, you've got some chalk pastels, and you've got that amazing pink. Um, pastel, which I think is going to be perfect. We're going to share this one. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> I find watercolor a really good way to start because you can just cover a big area so immediately. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, it's with a big brush, you've kind of got your base layer down very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And what would you? What do you find the most interesting about these figures we have here? Um. I like the combination of colors. Uh -huh. I think that the, that pink inside the dragon fruit, which was a real surprise when we cut it <laughs> open, is, um, is just so vibrant. Mm -hmm. But then I like it against the kind of dusty pink of the bowl. I think that's a great combination. It, I was yeah. surprised too, because I had never seen a dragon fruit open before. No, <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to eat that. I mean, <laughs> you slice it. For me, um, of course the colors but also the shapes yeah you know, um it kind of reminds me because right now i'm i'm, I'm i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> honestly I'm, I'm just you've done a lovely sketch though <laughs> thank you well I, I don't know how it's gonna turn out but we'll see but um i i can transfer uh one technique i use when i work in 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 portraits, for example, mm -hmm. I try to work with the shape of the of the face. You yeah. know, the, like how would I zoom up um, a face on on one shape? And sometimes I play like it's a puzzle. You know, and right now I see this 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 side. You know, like it like it follows the the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try something like that. <laughs> I I think that um I think portrait is the hardest thing you to think paint. So? Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, if, if this isn't quite accurate, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. If you get someone's face completely wrong, I mean, they, <laughs> they might not be happy about that either, but it's but, obvious, you know, if you get a, per a drawing of a person or a face wrong, it's it's a lot less forgiving, I think. The fruits are not going to complain, which I'm happy about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think this is the, um, the tricky thing about portraits. Um, sometimes you, you value one portrait, um, based on how it looks like the person but i feel like sometimes you can take a distance from the features of the person mm -hmm. and still get a good drawing and it's a different thing yeah. and it's still a portrait maybe not of not a portrait of that person yeah but sometimes you just have to let the drawings be yeah <laughs> yeah so um when you when you start with the with the um, with the water, watercolors, with the pencil strokes, do you usually start with a big brush or? Yeah, yeah? I start. So I've only got three brushes. Uh huh. Okay. You've got you've got five, but we've got similar sizes actually, yeah. haven't we? I'm not gonna use all of them. I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> but I mostly use this three, and this one is not a work watercolor brush. It's a, it's an oil brush, and I use it for. You know, scratch, scratching mm -hmm. paper, mm -hmm. getting some, some, some whites. Sometimes. How are you? So um, this is my smallest, but I'm using a size six. I don't generally go smaller than a six. Okay. And my biggest today is um, three quarters of an inch, but I'll often go much bigger than this. I often use emulsion brushes, you know, that you use for painting the walls of the house, because mm -hmm. I like how big they get. So they're not meant for watercolor at all. But um, also, you like to work in big size, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is as small as I would normally go, A3. Mm. 
I um, I also know that you love to work on the floor, which I yeah, find amazing. I know, I'm restricting <laughs> myself here, sitting at a desk. It's not natural. <laughs> I'll cope. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever worked on the floor? Um, rarely. I don't know. Maybe maybe I just don't know that much about the posture because yeah. <laughs> in... I mean, do you start to get sore knees or you know? Knees, <laughs> you said. Yeah, uh, like oh. if I'm kneeling on the floor, I often kneel on a cushion, but okay. still, it's um, it's not the most comfortable position <laughs> for painting in. Oh, but the body gets used to it. I yeah. I can imagine. For me, I'm as, as I was. Uh, I, I think we, we we talked about this when we were getting this this live ready. Um, we have a very different way of working because, for example, I'm an illustrator who is like super attached to the table. I try yeah, to be yeah. in control of all the details, and you are more playful, which I find fascinating because <laughs> it's right the opposite of what I do, and yeah. I think that's amazing. But it's funny, isn't it? I look at your work and I could never paint the way you paint. I mean, I just, I just couldn't. So <laughs> it's, we just, um, we have the way that we do things, I guess. And then that's it. And, play and to our strengths. I, I feel that that's, I mean, th that that's interesting too. You know, like when you when you say, for, I I feel like right now I'm trying to push myself a little bit out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and because I would usually start working on the details and then add final layers of yeah. color to mix the um, the whole um make it more ho homogeneous homogeneous is that a word <laughs> homogeneous homogeneous yes. oh, yeah, Sorry. i can barely say it yeah <laughs> um but right now i'm trying something different and for example this 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 water effects like the ones you're getting you know that i can see in your drawing that it has uh, the intensity is different mm -hmm. different in in different uh sides of the of the stain yeah sometimes i try to control that and that's not quite natural when you talk about watercolor mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you feel, Carlos, about when you make a mistake? When I make a mistake? Like, do you ever feel that you've got to the end of a painting and and then right at the last minute you do something that you think has ruined the whole thing? Or do you ever feel, do you ever feel like that? Or do you feel like it can always be, be rescued even when something hasn't gone to plan? Um, I think most of the times it can be rescued. Yeah. But if I make a mistake, I, um, I use this brush this one i told you about the, the oil one to, mm -hmm. to scratch the mm -hmm. paper uh but I, I i feel like even with when you when you make a mistake on the drawing you just it's good to keep going you know to yeah. see where it where it goes How yeah you? yeah well i think um i try and step back from it really the thing that yeah. i think has gone wrong i'll think why do i think it's gone wrong mm -hmm. is and there anything i can do about it uh -huh. It's so easy, isn't it, to go kind of be really catastrophic about a mistake. <laughs> oh, no, the whole thing's ruined. That's it. That's I'm a true. failure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never paint again. <laughs> and for example, when you when you make those mistakes you're talking about or what you consider a mistake. Yeah. Um, do you usually repeat the drawing or try to make the best of it? You, you well, from it, right? Um, I would normally have lots of paintings going on at the same time. So if I was painting this and it wasn't alive, I would probably do five or six okay. and I'd be working on them simultaneously. So I'd come back to one. It means that I don't get too preoccupied with mm -hmm. um, making one the perfect final one, you know. But um, I guess as well, I try and make my paintings so that I use as few brush strokes as possible sometimes. Mm -hmm. So for me, making a mistake is often where um, I've carried on longer than I should have done. You know, I should have stopped when it was still quite mm. um, untouched. <laughs> it's always hard to stop, isn't it? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it. How do you know when you're finished? Do you always know that? Or do you often think, I'll uh, come back? I'm not sure about it. Oof. It depends because when it's a commission, I rely on time, on the time I have to finish it, and yeah. then that's the deadline. But it's hard to know when to when to stop. Um, do you? Um, what what um, what stage of the drawing would you consider enough to say this is it? 
yeah, or something. I know. I mean, I mean, I still don't know the answer to that. <laughs> you know, like it's because if you don't go far enough, mm -hmm. then you know there was always the potential it could have been slightly better. But if you go too far, you can't. I mean, with watercolor, you can't undo it. Really, That's you can't. True. It's not like oil or something where you can take it off. That's true. Um, I was I was thinking of something we were talking right before the 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 live started, mm -hmm. uh, and it was about the um, the most of the paper. Like, it, do you make it wet before you start painting, yeah. or you start? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't ever normally yeah. make it wet. Sometimes if I've stretched the paper and you know like properly stretched it, making the paper wet, and then stretch, and then I might start painting while the paper is still a little damp. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, normally I don't wet the paper first. Is that your normal starting point? Mm, it depends because uh, I feel like you get different textures. For mm -hmm. example, right now I'm working on the on the little seeds of the fruit. Yes, and I'm I'm working on them wet because I, f I feel like it's um, you can see some some of them are are um, uh, thicker, you know, like more uh, stronger in in color if that mm -hmm. makes sense, and some others are like. Um, I don't know how to say this in English, really, but it looks like it's under underwater. You know, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I feel like when you exactly. work um, on wet, you get different intensities. Hmm. And do you would you say you try to make the best of the water stain as long as it's wet, like before it, before it dries? Um, I prefer waiting for a layer to dry, but mm -hmm. we probably haven't got time completely to do that so I'm just going to press on but maybe it would be good to take some questions and then I can uh, let it dry a little but I'm just going to get this green down and then okay, okay. and then I'll stop and check questions <laughs> okay that's great um, I, I think it's very interesting what you say because um, letting it dry makes you um, um, Pro, uh, makes your progress on the drawing different you know for yeah. example I, I i started with uh, on this part um with the whole thing wet but mm -hmm. as long as it get dries the the stains um look thicker and mm -hmm. i'm trying to um to play with it oh we have a question here uh, <laughs> are we working with references or our, our imagination we are um, we've got the fruit in front of us, the real thing right here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you find it easier working from real life? Like if you were painting a portrait and the, you were painting the person, they were sitting in front of you, is that easier for you or harder than working from a photo? Oh, much harder. Yeah. When you, when you see something that's moving, uh, it's, it's very hard to, to decide the angle yeah. or the final look, but you usually work um, for example, when you, you like to draw animals yeah. and you like to mm, draw them from, from life, right? Well, I think that I mean, it's obviously not always possible to see like a polar bear from life. So you do end up having to rely on photos. But I definitely think that um, my drawings and paintings are better when I've worked from life because mm -hmm. I have a tendency to get, um, I think, too preoccupied with trying to do an accurate drawing if I'm working from a photo. And for me, they're much, they're much more, they might not be as accurate, but they're more interesting drawings if, or paintings if, um, if I haven't worked from a photo, mm -hmm. especially if it's, a, you know, it's a moving animal. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, you have to work so fast. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's something I find fascinating about your work. Because I, I've seen your your portraits of animals, your mm -hmm. your birds, and your dogs, and I feel like you like there's a lot of movement, there's a lot <laughs> of soul in it. But but it's still even even if it if it changes because your drawing is very spontaneous, um, it's your hand, you know, and, and I mm -hmm. think that's that's fascinating. It is funny, isn't it? How we just we can never really escape our style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you might try and draw it a different way but your own your own way of doing it just always seems to creep back in <laughs> that's true um well i have a question for you yeah. um have you because most people who like to draw and who like to paint are usually very worried about finding their own style yeah um were you like that <laughs> was that something that worried you? <laughs> honestly carlos i still don't think i found my style really you know i, I just feel like it's um i mean i obviously just do things the way i do them um 
but I don't feel like I was kind of on a quest to find my style and then mm. I found it. You know, I think in a way it's, I like to think it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, being constantly open to mm -hmm. new ways of working. But um, what do you think? I mean, I feel like you quite clearly have a style, even though within that there's, there's quite a bit of variety in your work, isn't there? Some of your portraiture feels um, like you can see the brush strokes in it. You know, it feels quite loose in a way. And then there's other stuff like your uh, movie scenes, which are just so, <laughs> right. you know, they're, they're, they're all watercolor and they're all by you, obviously, but there's a difference somehow. Well, I, to be honest, this is something I, I, I wonder a lot about yeah. too. Um, I feel, well, this is a, a thought I, I had when I, was in, when I was a student at the art school. And I remember when, when you studied painters or, or, you know, different artists, different artists and, and the way they, they worked, I, um, I would think, okay, this, this person can paint a chair and it's still their style. They can paint yeah, whatever, yeah. but they have a, a hand, you know, like the yes. hand has a life of, of its own. And, you know, that, that was something I, I, I've always wanted to find. I don't know if I've found it, but I, what I try to do is copy myself a lot. Like try to work with the same colors, try to recreate something I did in another illustration so that my work has some um, coherence. Is yeah, that too? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We were talking at, um, before the filming started about, me about colors. Mm -hmm. And you um, have a much more limited, well, you, you have in your set much more limited number of colors that you work with. Whereas I've got lots of colors here, but... In reality, you were asking me about whether I have kind of set colors that I use, and I didn't think I did until you asked me that question. And then, mm. then I realized that it's the same five colors I end up replacing quite a lot. So, oh, yeah. so, so yeah. Which, which, which colors would you say they are? Indigo blue, okay. I use a lot. I mean, I, I get through that about three times the rate of every other color, I think. <laughs> um, three times the rate. Yeah, Payne's gray. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and then a kind of turquoisey blue as well is, uh, or kind of turquoisey green. I mm -hmm. use a lot. Yeah, I think paints blue gray is one of my favorites too. Mm -hmm. And um, I think also the turquoise uh, green is also one that I that I use a lot. Mm -hmm. Or you know, with turquoise you never know if it's blue or green. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I just go I more for blue. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. So should we take some questions? Definitely. Um, right now, I'm, I'm trying no, to work on you keep going on wet. Do I? Uh, here we go. Okay. I like you keep going, Carlos. I'll read it out. <laughs> Thank you. I like to paint grass as background with a few violets. Not sure if I should start with all green background and work on flowers later. Okay. So I like to paint paint grass as a background with a few violets. Presumably, it, the violets are in the grass. Um, not sure if I should start with all green background oh. and work on the flowers later. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> what would you do if you? Had I'm, st I'm trying to think. What would I do? Um, yeah, I think I would because I suppose my my approach is to work um, broadly to start with, and then start to uh, focus more on the the detail. Mm -hmm. So um, if it was predominantly grass, I'd be getting most of that down. And then I'd add the violets in afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, maybe using masking fluid. Do you ever use masking fluid? No, I've, I must admit I've never tried it. Yeah, never. <laughs> I never used to. And then I started using it about a year ago, mm -hmm. very occasionally. Like, I just think there's some times where you need to preserve the whiteness to then come back to it. I, I can see that it, it's uh, it's very useful depending on on your type of watercolor because mm -hmm. if if you are very, if you go to the detail like um, if you focus on on the details and try to control the process um, the the masking fluid can also be useful but you work with big mm -hmm. strokes mm -hmm. so you don't have time to like skip this no part exactly of, mm -hmm. yeah I, I guess it, I find it frees me up to make quite broad brush strokes without worrying about trying to paint around something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, I would start with the green grass and then they add flowers, but what would, would you say? 
I would say the same. <laughs> Not because you said it first. But <laughs> Fair enough. Fair but enough. mostly because when you have, for example, that happens to me when when I make backgrounds or scenes. Mm -hmm. I um, I try to start with the um, with the color that's in the background, and then try to. You know, when when it's wet, I'm I, I'm imagining the the green is wet, and mm -hmm. you paint the flowers on top, and try to add the color to the green, mm -hmm. or try to scratch the green before it dries mm -hmm. to get the the spots, or maybe use salt or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever do that? <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes. You do. Yeah. With it's funny with um, wrinkly skins mm -hmm. or skins that have a lot of freckles. Yeah, yeah. It. Salt's perfect <laughs> for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have another question. Mm -hmm. Which brand of paper do you use? Well, we're using your paper today. <laughs> <laughs> so what brand are we using today? I'm using Arches Cold Press, which mm -hmm. is, um, for now, it's my favorite. How about you? Um, I would usually use Cold Press too, um, because I add in like colored pencil and things afterwards, and I don't want too much texture coming through. Mm -hmm. um, so I would never use very textured paper. Um, yeah, and I use, uh, well, to be honest, for most of my sketches, I use quite a cheap brand because I like to work quite prolifically. Okay. So um, unless it's a commit, like a, if it's a commission for a digital image, mm -hmm. then it doesn't really matter the paper because I'm going to scan it in. Right. If it's a commission for, um, you know, an original, then I'll use um, Waterford or Arches. Waterford. Yeah. And do, has this yeah. come off a block? Mm -hmm. like a pre-stretched block yeah yeah, sometimes yeah I, I, I like to work from the block but sometimes i like to buy the paper sheets um mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. i feel like even if they have the same characteristics they behave differently yeah do, do you think so yeah i don't know why <laughs> and also um i often use a roll of paper mm -hmm. and then um cut off the amount I need because if I want to work oh, big you know the, yeah. the pads only come so big don't they so hmm. what's the biggest size you've used for a oh, wow. uh a zero a zero yeah wow. quite big <clears throat> yeah that's great um I am it's been a long time that I don't work that big in watercolor but once I got a roll uh, it was a 10 meters roll Wow. And I got two meters and mm -hmm. I, I, I um, taped it on the floor, but it was ages ago. I, I was it for myself. you or was it for a commission? No, it was for me, but I, I, I don't see myself doing something like that <laughs> now with the way I work. <laughs> <laughs> that would take a while. Ooh, yes. <laughs> um, and you usually uh, work on, I don't think if I've made you this question before, but what are called people or, or mixed media? watercolor paper okay yeah right. just because um it's it's thick enough to you know i would usually use at least 300 gram mm -hmm. and then it's thick enough to take whatever i'm going to throw at it because even if i'm using like i'll sometimes throw emulsion paint in mm -hmm. um but if i'm if i'm using emulsion then i might water it down so it kind of acts a little like watercolor paint you know so mm -hmm. um <clears throat> excuse me so yeah, the thicker paper, the better, I think, whatever I'm putting on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. And I'm really happy that we're both team cold press. Because <laughs> team cold I press. Feel, <laughs> I feel like we're not, we are a few. <laughs> we are a few. Really? Do most people? I, I feel like watercolor artists mostly like rough texture. Okay. And I, and I, I like cold press for the same reason you said. Uh -huh. Do we have any more questions? Um, which colors did you use for the papaya, Laura? That goes for you. Oh, do you know, I don't know. I know that's not a helpful answer, <laughs> but um, I don't uh, I don't really know my colors. I mean, I do if I'm, if I'm using like a set of 12 mm -hmm. and I'm mixing up colors from uh, like primaries, mm -hmm. then I know the, you know, the kind of the blues I've got and the reds I've got mm -hmm. and the yellows. But um, otherwise, I don't really take any notice of what the name of the paint is until it needs to be replaced and then I go all oh, right that's that color and then I'll so I, I genuinely only know the, the names of the colors that I replace the most often which is indigo <laughs> and paints gray and sap, sap green 
so I'm sorry that I can't help with that. Um, <laughs> what? Well, let me think. What I was using for the papaya. Um, but you know, I feel like that's mostly how we work. I before I was a teacher, I mm -hmm. didn't know that much of my process. We, we were talking about that before. Yeah, yeah. That sometimes you don't really know what you do, but you just let it flow. Yeah, it, I think that's what makes um, teaching so difficult sometimes mm -hmm. is trying to um, communicate what feels quite instinctive for you or that you've kind of built up over the years and then think, goodness, I don't actually know how I do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know what my process is until I have to come to talk about it. <laughs> actually, one of your courses is about that, right? Like being more playful with with materials and... Yeah. <laughs> well, the first one was about experimenting with different tools and um, kind of and different materials, you know, whatever you've got at home and uh, throwing it in. And then the one I'm filming now is about um, ways to be playful with the way that we paint with watercolour. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I'm interested to know what colour you've used for your um, seeds on the dragon fruit. For the seeds? Yeah. Uh, just Payne's Blueberry. That was the, the only one. Uh -huh. And I, I have another question for you. When yeah. you, I, I probably know the answer, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to I check. When you work um, from, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Was, <laughs> you forgot the question. I forgot the question. I'm glad it's not just me that, you know, the brain suddenly empties. No. Oh, it, it can yeah, again. Go. It can again, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> can like, so when, when you work um, um, on something like wet and wet, yeah. do you let it dry? Do you like to let the paper dry at its own pace or you use a hairdryer? Um, I usually use a hairdryer because I feel like I'm kind of on a roll. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose the flow, so I want to speed it up so that I can then get on with the next layer. Mm -hmm. So normally I would, or, or if I'm working on a few at once, then one would be drying while I'm moving on to another one. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it means if I've got like five drawings going on, then I can apply a slightly different process to each one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's interesting. I feel like a lot of watercolor artists like to uh, work with the hair dryer. Mm -hmm. I only- Do you? Mm -hmm. When, I, when I'm running out of time. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think we could get the hairdryer out here, do you? <laughs> Everyone could listen to the hairdryer for five minutes while I just speed it up. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> I don't know, for me, I feel like I've learned a lot from, you know, uh, pigments and, and, and papers mm -hmm. by just observing how it dries, what, what happens. Because yeah. when, once you put the stain, it, it moves. That's true. There's something to be said for um, the kind of slow approach, isn't there? Mm. Where you because it does change as it as it dries, and you want to be kind of be able to respond to that. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm. The other risk with a hairdryer, of course, is that if it's really wet, that you just blast it across the page. <laughs> you know, I've done that before. Where I've got the hairdryer out, and then it's been very wet, and then suddenly it's kind of Ooh, shot I've, across the page <laughs> i've been there <laughs> <laughs> so um well I, I was i was looking at your drawing and I, I like how you start including the the other techniques you know yeah, the, the yeah. dry techniques with a very loose stain mm -hmm. yes it's beautiful really i feel like i'm a kind of cheating at watercolor because and we were chatting about this at the start where we because i feel like for me, watercolour is um, just the foundation and then the real work happens with the pencils and the wax pastels on the top. Whereas you were saying that you you would use a very small brush for the detail and that what, yeah. where you're most comfortable is working entirely in watercolour. It's for me, entirely in watercolour feels uh, much more scary because I'm much more limited and you know, to use a small brush is getting really? quite fiddly for me. <laughs> way, you know, I wouldn't normally use a small brush. Well, to, to be honest, I... Um... As as an artist who works solely with with watercolor, I think your your work is super fresh, and that's that's what I like the most of it, because um, that's something that's right the opposite way I I work, mm -hmm. and sometimes you just need to see that. Yeah, it's very refreshing. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's um I think that's what's so interesting, isn't it? Because in in this conversation and before the filming started, is it was just like as soon as we started to chat mm -hmm. it, even though we both work in watercolor 
like we were just finding out so many differences, weren't we, about <laughs> the way that we approach it. And like I was listening to you thinking, gosh, does that mean, does that mean I'm not doing it right? And you, you know, it no just way. it just shows that there's just so many different ways that you can paint with watercolor. And you know, you'd add a third watercolor artist in to the mix, and they'd probably have a completely different way of working with it too. Exactly. I feel like there's no right way, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. the 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 more uh, the more you you allow yourself to play with the technique, mm -hmm. uh, the more you learn about it. Yeah. I, I think it's very um, maybe it's it, it's not the best way to think when when you're doing uh, a drawing in watercolor or using certain technique. Um, if you start, you know, putting that pressure on yourself, like I'm not doing this right, maybe yeah. I should do it another way. You just let yourself play. Do you feel like you put that pressure on yourself at all? Like when do you, how do you feel about painting and the creative process? Do you find it calming or do you find it kind of fraught with anxiety sometimes or, or everything? I mean, it's an, I'm just, I'm so interested in, in how we're feeling when we're painting because there's definitely times I get completely lost in it, you know, and time passes and you've forgotten to eat and that's an yeah. amazing <laughs> state to get into, but it's not always that easy, is it? There's definitely times where um, it makes me really angry or really frustrated <laughs> or ah, I can't do this. Or it's just, it's like every emotion comes into play all in one painting sometimes. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, for me, um, maybe because the the my type of work um is very scheduled you know like i, I have a certain yes. time to do a portrait or a character yeah. especially because i work for for newspapers and magazines mm -hmm. mostly and they have really specific well not specific that was not the word um very um, short yeah. uh deadlines yeah and that makes my that made my work very me mechanic mm -hmm. i would say like hmm? yeah and, and, I, and I you don't have the luxury of um, starting all over again, or mm -hmm. would it, you know you you have the pressure of a deadline, so mm -hmm. it has to be, yeah. You don't have so much freedom. That's it, and and you know uh, this is something I've I've lost, and I I, I want to get it back in my mm -hmm. process. In my process, um, it's been a long time that I don't sketch before I do a drawing. I start just adding some some lines on the paper with pencil mm. and it turns out that way <laughs> yeah but it's been a long time that i don't that i don't sketch and i like that you that you make many versions of the drawing even inside of the same drawing right <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean is that what you're observing now uh no 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 but but maybe you will do it i don't know but oh, what, if i was at home i'd be doing five you mean is that what you mean oh. when you say many versions of the same drawing Oh, I, I meant, I, I was uh, thinking about drawings I've seen of you when you put the water stains and then you draw the thing on another side and yeah. it's like many of Oh, the, I see, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think that's 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 great. Do you, do you plan it on the composition or <laughs> <laughs> it comes uh, naturally? No, I think I start with a small plan mm -hmm. and then... Uh, <laughs> but not too much okay. because I suppose that makes me feel that um, a mistake is less of a problem because I can be more reactive to it if, I've, if I'm not uh, being too strict with a plan, you know, like it's more of a guideline, <laughs> I think. Wow. Yeah. What about you? How much do you plan? Mm, I don't know, like... Maybe just uh, the the pencil sketch, but mm -hmm. after that, I just let it happen. I, because as as we were talking before, um, I try to mix, um, you know, um, wet with uh, wet on dry, mm -hmm. you know, and in watercolor. I mean, because that's. Sorry, I, my, my man just just collapsed because I, I was talking <laughs> of, of watercolor, and I'm seeing all this stuff, and I'm like. Okay. No. It is, we, are, <laughs> we are trying to do lots of things at once, um, drawing, talking, should we take another question just to, <laughs> just to make life even more difficult? <laughs> is there another question? Do we have any? Mm -hmm. 
But I must say this watercolor is entirely based on, on your style. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like you've aced my style in that case. So, uh, <laughs> no way. I need to be careful. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a question. Here. Okay. What type of wax pestles do you use, Lara? I struggle. Okay. Hmm. I struggle to get them. I may have to order them from overseas. These are Neo Color. Um, can you see it on the camera if I put it under the, the one with a it's maybe too far away to see. They're Caran d'Ache Neo Color um, Aquarelles. Mm -hmm. um, but what I like about these is that you can um, you can draw over a painting very like, so you can correct things. You can add lines on top, and they kind of pack a punch. But if you want to, um, uh, they also kind of turn into watercolor. So if you you can activate them with the water as well, so they move um, quite fluidly as well. So they're quite versatile. Um, do you ever use kind of water soluble wax pastels? Never. No. So you you in those pastels? Shall they... I show you? Let me see where I sure. can do one. If you mix them with water, they melt. Yeah. So look. But also they do melt, they melt in the sun, I realized when I was drawing outside really? once. Yeah, and I had some very <laughs> soft pastels. So if I put that. So they, they feel like wax crayons. And then. Look, and then they wow. just blend. Beautiful. And it, and it has a lot of pigment. Yeah, exactly. That's beautiful. I've never used those. Maybe you should try. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want one now? Is that too, that's putting you on the spot. <laughs> They're here if you want one. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely trying. I, I don't know if now, yeah. <laughs> because I'm Afterwards. very concerned. Afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Are you feeling out of your comfort zone? You don't look it. I mean, I know this is not what you'd normally draw, but it's... Really? Uh, thank you. Um, it's very good. Thank you. I'm, I, I don't know. I tried, I'm trying to think about, you know, I, I was just telling you about the, the sketches, which is like a, a, a costume I've, I've lost. And I'm trying to think of the way I, I did them, you know, like really let my hand really loose and yeah. not think about, just think about the shapes. You know, that's what I'm trying. Uh, how about you, when you, when you add the lines, do you yeah. try to follow the watercolor shapes or no. stay out of them? No, and I think that's why um, I paint first and then draw afterwards, you know, because mm -hmm. like, I guess lots of, the, the typical way of doing combining line and paint mm -hmm. is to do a, you know, pen and ink drawing or a line drawing and then add the paint afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I want I want the watercolour to feel loose enough that it's not being confined by a drawing first. So I don't worry too much about accuracy when I'm getting the paint down. And in fact, I don't worry that much about accuracy when I'm doing the drawing because um, mm -hmm. I'm using what's I'm using what I'm drawing as a as a reference, but I'm not trying to completely replicate it. That's what about you? you? Like, how much do you kind of um, mm -hmm. um, use artistic license? Do you know mm -hmm. that expression? You know, where you just, <laughs> you're not worrying too much about creating an exact drawing or? That's a great question <laughs> and a hard one to answer, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I think it's great. I, um, I think that when, when you work on a portrait, sometimes you, 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 you think you have to stick to some, well, this is, this is something I, I tell my students all the time. Portraits are about all about distances. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when, when, you, uh, when you put the features of a face at a certain distance, you um, get the resonance. Mm -hmm. So that is something that can restrict you, but I try to stick away from it with the shapes, like mm -hmm. trying to exaggerate. But I must admit, I, I, I do that less now than before. Mm -hmm. And I miss it, really. <laughs> Why do you think you do it less? I think because the way I work and the way my, my clients are, you know, like they want it all very fast. And because yeah. that's how, how, how press works. Um, it changed the way I draw. And I feel mm -hmm. this is something you said. I don't know if now or before when we were getting ready, but the more you, um, you experiment with a, with a technique, the more you master it, if that's the way yes. to put it, yeah, yeah. Mm, the less you get out of it. And I think 
what what you do with watercolors like you let it be you like the you let the pigments flow and and uh, you don't try to get perfect stains mm -hmm. i think that's beautiful and that's something i miss <laughs> that's interesting isn't it that you so you're like how do you find it working to tight deadlines and for somebody else's brief like is that is that pressure mm, yeah a lot of pressure <laughs> do you usually work i can imagine then when it's your own project you you work more at ease or yeah, you yeah. are harder on yourself definitely i feel like it changes the way i paint when i'm painting for somebody else really? and it shouldn't should it because they've they've commissioned you because they like the way you paint so you shouldn't be self-conscious about are they going to like it or you know have yeah. i done what they wanted you should just paint but but somehow in your head you have uh the concern about their approval or you know they're, yeah. they're paying you to do do a painting so you you hope that they're gonna like it yeah you're right but i, I feel that the hand is always very sincere <laughs> do you think yeah the <laughs> hands always so. tell more than what you want to say <laughs> do you um how much do you paint for yourself as well as um doing commissions Mm, I would say less than I wish, but yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to I'm trying to do it more because I um I feel like you you can stay away from from your own projects very long. How would no. you? I think it's important to uh, well, it's important to have a balance, isn't it? Because you obviously need to make an income, <laughs> so you can't just uh, always do your own thing. But I think <laughs> if you do too much of um, work commercially mm -hmm. and don't find the time to paint for yourself there's a risk that you mm -hmm. well for me there's a risk that you stop taking mm -hmm. stop taking risks and experimenting because you can't take a risk and experiment when when it's for somebody else right so you always play it safe I think you tend mm -hmm. to play it safe when it's for somebody else but if it's for you then it gives you the time to to play and explore and um, be less worried about the result, I think. Yeah, that's really interesting. Wow, this color really works. If you want to use it, wow, look it's... at that. <laughs> that is that is that is a pink. We we agreed to use okay watercolor, uh, watercolor pencils and wax pastels. We did, yeah. This this one is not a wax pastel. I it's know. like a like a normal. For example, if I do this, it's gonna um, it's like this. It's gonna smudge. Yeah, it's a chalk pastel. Chalk pastel. Yeah. Thank you um but i found this color and i was like i need it <laughs> yeah sometimes um water, watercolor is just i find it limiting i mean it's mostly what i use but there's definitely times where you need to throw something else in mm -hmm. and for me it would be i'd get that vibrancy with a liquid watercolor with liquid watercolor. yeah yeah um nice yeah um, it's funny that you said that you find it limiting um you you say it because for example watercolor um loses a lot of saturation yes, when it dries exactly yeah is it frustrating for you yes <laughs> do you find the same really yeah. yeah do you have any tips for how to deal with that um kind of disappointing <laughs> desaturation <as it> dries. <laughs> you know my 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 students i i, I teach uh, on an academy in, in madrid and my students usually uh get frustrated about that too mm. uh but for me um i think you just get to the point when you know how uh you control the plus you need to add you know yeah. to the stain if yes. you need to add more color yeah, and yeah. you control it with time yeah but it's always a little bit more than you wish it would be <laughs> yeah yes exactly you have to allow for it right when, mm -hmm. you, when it's wet I can't believe that how quickly this hour is going. Right. Okay, question. <laughs> Which is the thing that you like to paint the most in watercolour? Hmm. Is it portrait for you? Portrait, but more than portrait, I would say the eyes. Um, really? I, I, I it's tried all to... in the eyes, isn't it? Huh? It's all in the eyes. A, a person is, a portrait is nothing without getting the eyes right. Yes. And that, that was a really good question, and it's good yeah. to see you here, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, it's definitely the eyes, because I feel like when you get the eyes, if the rest is not so defined, it's okay. You're yes. just going to go to the eyes. How about you? Um, but it's funny you say that, because obviously I do um, 
quite a lot of dog drawings as well and I, I never do people <laughs> it was saying before to me that yeah the hardest thing is is, is drawing a person um and I sometimes draw my kids but otherwise mm -hmm. um I wouldn't draw I wouldn't draw a portrait but the same I would feel the same when I'm drawing a dog if I if I get the eyes right the rest sort of falls into place I think uh, well Drawing dogs is drawing portraits because it's, <laughs> and especially you know I, I've never I've never had a dog of my own, um, and I've and you know me I've neither never, actually really? yeah that, I mean most people think I have I have a dog because I draw dogs but um yeah I don't I mean three three kids is <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like having dogs so <laughs> but I feel like when when you when you know very much the face of an animal you can really. I don't know. Make the, see the difference, you know. Like if you if you if you're not used to see uh, animals, you can say this type of dog. All of them look the same. But yes. When you know your dog. <laughs> yes. You know. But this is the thing. I mean, it's maybe the same when you're drawing commission to do a portrait of a person. Mm -hmm. Is um, people know their dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they know if you haven't quite got their dog right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. to to you, they might just look like any dog, but to them, it's um, it's definitely, you know, it's their dog or it's not their dog. They would know. They would they would know in a lineup of dog paintings which one was their <laughs> dog. That's that's so funny. So um, I was gonna I was gonna ask on on your portraits of dogs. Mm. Do you usually um, uh, work on charcoal? Um. Yeah, I mean, I do I do watercolor portraits too, but mm -hmm. um, I do quite a lot of charcoal ones because um, it's so quick. Do you, do you ever work with charcoal? It's been wild. I mean, wild, it's just yeah. so forgiving, isn't it? So you, forgiving. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, it's not like watercolor. It's a good way to put it. If you make a mistake, you can just smudge it out and start all over again. Mm. It's um, low pressure. That's <laughs> right. It's a low pressure material. That's right. You can you can move it. But I feel like you can do that with watercolor too. For example, if you want to take out, um, you know, some white or more light. For example, I'm going to use this 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 brush. If I s scratch it like this, yeah, you can get something lighter. Or maybe you can lift. sometimes if I if I stay on the same mm -hmm. area, I use this. For example, when I want to draw hair or grass, you can you can take uh, you can lift up the pigment and then yeah. dry it. And you get you don't get to the white of the paper, but you, you get can it lighter. make it lighter. Yeah, hmm. I would. Um, can I borrow your berry pink? Pink. Definitely. Because <laughs> I'm going to add that, and then maybe add some water on the top. What do you think? Just do that. Do you ever add water to chalk pastel? You don't normally work with chalk pastel, right? No, I was no. trying to make it more, you know, less sharp less with the finger. Yeah. But I've never. Does it work when you add water to it? Shall I take that risk? I mean, it could all go wrong in the last five minutes. So if you, if I you do it, risk? I do it. All right, <laughs> thanks. Let me go first. <laughs> if the boat sinks, we will sink. <laughs> I guess because because I'm using wet materials for this, I don't want it to be too dusty. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to wet it. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, but it's works. probably going to tone it down a bit. I might not have the same vibrancy. Mm. But maybe um, it's fine because in some parts it's darker. Yeah. I, re I really like how, you know, that, that, that pink lane, mm. how it has different shapes depending on the sides. Like it goes stretching over here and then yes, then, yeah. then wider. Yeah, it's exactly. Beautiful. I think we, we, we both did very different. We had different shapes to the, to the fruits. Yeah. How much are you looking at the, the um, you know, the fruit in front of us, and how much are you kind of, you know, how much are you making sure that you're getting it right, and how much are you just kind of making it an an interesting painting? Um, that's a good question, but <laughs> <laughs> I would say. I want an exact percentage? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I would say um, the moment I decided the composition would be. A little bit forced that yeah. I, I place the papaya um, yes more under and yeah. the composition is different it gave me more freedom yeah. so the rest doesn't have to be accurate how about you yeah I'm using it I'm using the real the real fruit as a guide mm -hmm. and 
trying to make an impression of it, I suppose, rather than worrying too much about whether it's accurate. Mm -hmm. It feels like the important stuff to get in is the shadow. I don't know what you think. I feel like once you get a shadow in, it suddenly makes it feel more three-dimensional. It pops up. That's yeah. true. That's true. And that, that was what I was looking on, on on the screen when you see both of our drawings. Yeah. The, the way we worked on the light is really different. Because of the studio lights, I think, that the, there's not an obvious shadow. Mm -hmm. So we've both added one in to try and weight that bowl down, even though on the outside, on the tablecloth, I can't actually see much of a shadow in real life. That's in the true. bowl there is, but um, we've both added in a shadow because we knew they needed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Great minds, they can't ask great minds. <laughs> <laughs> great minds think alike. Yeah, <laughs> That's that's great. Um, I really like how the that you can see the the light direction on mm -hmm. on your tablecloth. Yeah. And and also I don't know if you did this intentionally, but I feel like the saturation plays a role. When it's lighter, it, the the colors are more vivid. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Was it intentional or, or <laughs> just? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I feel like you've got that dragon fruit really popping. The um, I don't know whether I can point to it. The one, the, the one that's not cut <laughs> open. Yeah, in contrast to your bowl. Really, thank you. Yeah, I was at first. I I tried to like exaggerate this, um, the shapes on top, mm -hmm. and I decided to change my mind <laughs> at the at the bottom. Of the <laughs> Halfway through, change direction. <laughs> but really, I'm not thinking very much about the colors. I'm just. I'm having a great time. I'm having with a this. great time. I can't say this is necessarily the best drawing I've ever done, but we're under unusual conditions, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't normally be talking, answering questions, have cameras. <laughs> but this is, we're just we're just missing the coffee. <laughs> yeah, I know. How do you normally work? Do you have music on? Do you like what's your kind of drawing routine? Do you do anything to warm up? Um, I usually turn the music on, but sometimes I get so into it that I, I forget about the music. Oh, mm. wait, we have another okay. question. Do you feel like you are influencing each other right now, painting side by side and looking what each other is doing? Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like we're influencing each other? Like like I said, I feel like I'm cheating on the Because <laughs> I keep looking at yours going, oh yeah, he's he's got that right and I haven't. No way, <laughs> because no it's, way. I think it's like, <laughs> It's like taking a photo of something and then working from a photo. Sometimes I'll take a photo of my drawing mm -hmm. and then I look at the photo and think, ah, now I can see what it's missing, you know? Whereas if you're only looking at, sometimes you, you know, I'm looking at yours thinking, ah, now I can see what mine's missing and you've got this and I, okay, I need to get that in. So it's a bit like having a bit of perspective on your drawing, isn't it? If you can kind of yes. take a step back. So it's, I definitely think we're influencing each other. They've come out more <laughs> similar in style than I was expecting. I yeah, don't know what yeah. you think. Me, me too. But I'm telling you, I'm totally influenced by <laughs> <laughs> by you and, and your style. And I feel that the, the um, what I find most most uh, surprising of uh, two of the two drawings yeah. is the way we played with the lights, uh, as we yes. were saying. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like you um, respected a lot more the lightning on. Uh, because you didn't add many lines to mm -hmm. it, and you're placing them more on the shadows, so you make them heavier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing, isn't it? How, how aware we are of, of what we're doing in our process, because um, until you come to have to talk about it or teach it, you don't, <laughs> you're not really aware of what you do and why you do, right. why you do it like that. So. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> But for me, I think I think that is a very um, important thing in my in my in my work. I always um, look for the volume. Yeah. And that's, for example, the um, that's what I think when I when I when I make when I'm making portraits. I think of the volume of every feature and how to make the best of it. That helps you exaggerate too. Yes. Hmm. Do you usually play more with? A combination of lines and shapes. Yeah, I think right? I think that's definitely is my approach is mm -hmm. breaking something down into the shapes that I can see, 
I mean, is that how you paint too? I mean, a face can very much be broken down into the sh into its shapes, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. I, I would say the same. Yeah. <laughs> but but I would say I feel more comfortable with the water stains mm -hmm. than with the lines. For some reason, okay. that's what's what comes easiest for me. Yeah. And do you do you have any like some some something you you always do when you finish a drawing, like add in some final like layers? A celebratory or... dance. <laughs> <laughs> Are um, we gonna do that too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the camera stopped. Um, yeah. What do I do when I? Um, that's interesting, isn't it? What your starting technique is, or what your starting process for a drawing is, and then your finishing process. You know, like the start and the end are kind of the key things, aren't they? Because the end is, well, how you know when you've finished. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I leave a, I leave a painting and then I'll come back to it like, a few days later. Wow. But you don't have that luxury if it's for a tight deadline, no, it's, I guess. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful it's, way um, to work. I'm so jealous. I need. I need. <laughs> I um, I'll often see something with fresh eyes if I if I've left it for a few days, you right. know, and have that perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my finishing process I don't know is is usually if I'm working on the floor I'm normally kneeling down, and then as I near the end I might stand up and take a step back, and then I can see what's missing, what needs still to be added. Mm -hmm. Do you? Um, Take a picture with your phone or something to um, to to see it in a smaller yes. size. Yeah, hmm? Does yeah, it help you? but yes, definitely. Yeah, you can so often see immediately then what still needs to be done. I think if you take a picture. What That's about true. you? What's your kind uh, of finishing up? I do the same, and I feel like when when you when your drawing is working well, it's a photogenic drawing. And also, I have this this little trick. I um, I use you can do it with a mirror too, but with a okay. phone. I, I I put it here and I see it, you know, flipped because it helps me see the symmetries or. Wow, that's I, a I really good tip. Like, like I mean, I mean, you look totally mad, but that's <laughs> that's a good tip. I, you could that. use a mirror like normal people, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like looking at the um, at the drawing. With, with new eyes, yeah. Um, you know, like flipping the drawing is also a, a way to help you look at it a different way. Yeah. And we, we both uh, got back to watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm going to tell you something. My, my students gave a name to one of my, my techniques. Mm -hmm. I, I always work on the on the features on and the little details of, of a portrait and then add layers uh, to uh, look for the skin tone mm -hmm. and they call it the the final layer of death okay. <laughs> why is it the final layer of death because it decides whether the drawing lives or dies yeah yeah <laughs> It's very well, it's risky a very because, tense moment then. Yeah, it's, it's like you paint over everything you've done yeah. and you lose a lot of details. But that that is, for example, a way the way I force myself to be less in control. Because mm -hmm. when you paint over, you lose the details. And yeah. if I'm not able to synthesize this, mm -hmm. I, I do it that way. Mm -hmm. Should we take another question? Mm -hmm. Hi, wonderful to be able to watch you both work. Do you work in layers with watercolor? What is the trick about being able to work in layers so that they really do not smudge or run when painted over, even when the first layer is completely dry and with good materials? Mm, wow, yeah, yeah, important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the, that's the key, isn't it? Waiting for the first layer to be completely dry. Mm -hmm. But you're right in that sometimes um, it can be dry and then you add another layer and and it um, disrupts the first layer. I mean, do you find that? Yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, it depends on the paper. For example, this one we're using, Ar Ar Arches um, mm. Cold Pressed, is really good for adding layers because the once you put the water on the paper, it says. Mm -hmm. But if you use a different paper, and you might use it for different effects, 
um, you you lose some some parts of the drawing. It's okay if you want it, but if you don't want it, <laughs> yeah. It's but but the the um, the trick is exactly what you said. Um, trying to make sure that the first layer are it's totally uh, dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess I've found that that's happened most. I've dislodged the paint from the first dry layer um, when it's got quite a lot of pigment in it. Mm -hmm. So if it's actually got um, if it's quite a dilute layer, then it's less likely to be disrupted, I think, by or kind of reactivated by a new layer going on top. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's quite intense with pigment, then I think I find it's more likely to be reactivated by a new layer. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Reactivated, I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened to me. I always lose it. <laughs> Maybe I scratch too much because this is something I, I, I find um, key in watercolor. When you, when you put more water on the brush, you don't you touch the paper less mm -hmm. and if you um, and if and if it's more dry you scratch the paper mm. so the first layer goes away yeah that's a good question though should we have another one mm -hmm. how do you boil, both avoid getting blooms and watermarks <laughs> i don't i i like the blooms and the watermarks i think that they become part of <laughs> the painting so on mine where i've done the tablecloth i've let it blooms so I celebrate the blooms rather than try and avoid them but that's partly I'm realizing I'm quite a lazy painter <laughs> I'm no definitely way. taking like the easy approach so okay well that's a mistake but that's okay that's that's part of the painting um I think it's uh it's what makes a watercolor painting interesting is those kind of bits where the paint has done its thing so I try not to control it too much um, but what do you feel about playing to watermark? That's a great question because, you know, I, I really uh, admire how you <laughs> celebrate blooms and include them in your process. Uh -huh. Because for me, it was, it was more, um, I, I would try to pro provoke them in my, mm -hmm. in, in my characters. Uh, the, the ones I, I did some time ago, now I, I, I try to skip them. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the blooms are pigment that is, um, I don't know how to say this in English, like, I'm, I'm imagining, like, this is the, the um, this is the, the metaphor that comes to my mind. I'm imagining a wave that's carrying the sand, and the sand um, gets together on one side. Yeah. You know, that's a bloom. So if it's together on one side, you can come with the brush and move it, and, you know, put it on a different way. That's, that's the way you... Um, change them when they happen, yeah, yeah. but they're going to happen. So yeah, you also yeah. have to celebrate them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we have another question? Mm -hmm. Hello from Yorkshire, England. I bought some liquid charcoal, but never have used it. Laura, have you ever used it? If so, how and what do you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't. I didn't even know you could get liquid charcoal. Have you ever? Mm. I think I've heard of liquid graphite. It might okay. be similar. Okay. It's like a like a um what's the word? I'm I'm only coming up with the word pill, but it's not a pill. Like like that. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> um like in a pan kind of thing, like in mm. a block or something. That's it. Um I haven't used liquid charcoal, but I've used um powdered charcoal. Mm -hmm. Recently I got some powdered charcoal and um and I love that. But, and I, I apply that with a wet brush sometimes. So I'll um, get, uh, I mean, I don't, again, it's trying to think through your process. I'll get the, the powdered charcoal and um, dip a dry brush in and I'll brush it on the page, but then I'll also have a, a wet brush and then paint. Um, so I kind of activate the charcoal with um, the water. So it's a combination. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the only way that I've kind of, liquidized charcoal i suppose but yeah i've never actually bought it i'm going to look that up now mm -hmm. and get some liquid charcoal and and have you ever worked with um liquid graphite no or no. Not, not not liquid but the one you can make wet <laughs> any melts. um like a water soluble graphite pencil mm -hmm. you mean um yeah i have but not for a while that's a good reminder. I might get that back out <laughs> when I get home. For the third course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I might need a bit longer before I do a third course. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is this new one? Um, it's playful 
kind of creative watercolor sketchbook ideas. I don't know what the final title is going to be, but it's something along those lines. But it's a kind of playful way to play with um, work in a sketchbook and paint with um, watercolor, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Should we have another question? Mm -hmm. A few more questions before we go. I now it's time. <laughs> a couple more minutes left. Do you ever use iridescent watercolors? There you go. Oh, <laughs> Carlos there has we got go. some in his set. I was waiting for this question the entire <laughs> life. <laughs> Do you know this person, Carlos? Have you set uh, this up? <laughs> no, but nice to meet you. <laughs> so, uh, Michelle, this, this two on my palette are iris iridescent. Um, the colors are very, this, this one is uh, bronze. Bronze? That's the bronze, one? Bronze, yeah, okay, yeah. Bronze. And uh, turquoise blue. And I'm trying to show them to you on, on the palette. I don't know if it's going to show up in the palette, but the, the pigment should shine a little bit. Um, I like the effect, but to be honest, uh, in a few days or in a few weeks, it's gone. Maybe it's the way I keep the drawings that makes it be gone, <laughs> but um, the drawings um, I have in which I've used this this too, the pigment remains, but the, the, the effect is gone quickly. I wonder if it's harder to get um, the kind of paint that lasts when you add something to it that makes it so shiny, you know, like it mm. maybe doesn't, it's harder to get the, you can't have both, you know, you can have sparkly, but not. Mm. <laughs> you can not have everything. That, that lasts, yeah. Do you ever use neon paints? Neon. No, but I want to. Yeah, I do. I to. That's, that's going to be my next challenge, mastering some neons. Really? Neons, yeah. We've got time for another, another question before we finish. Okay. One more. Wow, you really made it pop up. <laughs> I don't think so. I feel like this dragon fruit has kind of just gone muddy, really. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. I like the way it is. <laughs> You've got much more light in yours. It's, it's got much more depth. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> You've was... done a great job. No, 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 I, I love job. the way it looks and the, wow, okay, now we, we go with the flattery for the end of the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go, let's go with the, <laughs> with the question, uh, Vicky says, do you like to work watercolor pencils, pencils on wet or dry? Okay, yeah. We were discussing this before. Yeah, I mostly use them on dry, um, and I have all my pencils like mixed in together, so the watercolor pencils mixed with the, the ones that aren't water soluble, so there are definitely times where I'll pick up the wrong pencil and, and start drawing on, on a wet draw on a wet painting and then realize it's a water it's a watercolor pencil and then it does a very different thing mm -hmm. right so um so then i have to just kind of go with that but uh yeah i would mostly mostly work with colored pencils on dry but watercolor pencils um i think my approach is normally to draw with a watercolor pencil and then add the water afterwards to move it around mm -hmm. What would you do? I mean, that's what that's sort of what you've done when you started out with your pencil drawing, right? I try to, um, you know, work with them when the paper was wet, but it didn't quite make the effect I was expecting. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I just waited, added some lines, and then made it wet again. But I, I don't usually work with uh, watercolor pencils unless I'm on my sketchbook. Mm -hmm. That's where I, you know, allow myself to experiment more. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, really, what you said about the lightning is what I was going to say about yours. I really like how, how the light comes this uh -huh. way and how the plate, you know, has a lot of a volume, mm -hmm. you know. It's very separated from, from the cloth. But still, this this parts, like the papaya you have here and, and, and this side of the plate, kind of mixes with the with the lightning mm -hmm. and I feel that it it helps a lot to the effect. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because like, we're looking at them both now and yeah. it's the same. There's so many similarities in the, in the way we've approached, but they're two very different drawings, aren't they? Definitely. Yeah. It, it's, it's been a pleasure to see you work. Likewise. By... Likewise. <laughs> Maybe we can do another one. This has been loads Definitely. of fun. Definitely. Do you dare to do one of the record? Are you tired? <laughs> 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 exhausted, Carl. Oh. <laughs> you painting all day. Maybe, maybe one off the record. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. One day. Okay, good. So, 
it was it was very nice to work with you and Me i really too. hope we we get to see each other again and we can do something like this again i hope so <laughs> thanks carlos <laughs> thank you laura La idea es como algo muy frágil. I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que lo tienes ahí?